It's Get Real, the video blog for all your classic movie needs. Something to please all tastes and age groups. Holy mackerel. Only on the YouTube channel Classic Flicks Mix Picks. Listening for the Rosalind Russell. Coming through on track number nine. It's Get Real for December 23rd, 2022. Seems like just 135 years ago that Eric Bloor was born on December 23rd, 1887. He excelled at playing snooty valets, irritable hotel managers, and other assorted nonplussed individuals. Here, he's running through his range of facial expressions. I think he performed this every morning. Not. In 1843, Charles Dickens published A Christmas Carol, a novella of less than 100 pages. From this twig has a mighty forest sprouted. First stage productions, then silent short films, feature films, radio versions, TV movies set in various modern day settings, gender benders, and is there a TV sitcom that doesn't have a Scrooge episode around the holidays? All from this one little book. And the story seems endlessly adaptable. For children, there's Bugs Bunny and Mickey Mouse, the Muppets, and the one that was my introduction to Charles Dickens' Many Christmases Past, a Mr. Magoo Christmas Carol from 1962, with veteran actor Jim Backus doing Magoo's Scrooge. It's actually a pretty good, faithful kids' version. For the grown-ups, the first attempt to put a Christmas Carol on film was the primitive British version from 1901, entitled Scrooge or Marley's Ghost. It ran a tidy six minutes. There was another version produced in 1908, but it's considered a lost film. In 1910, Edison released the first American version. Notice the improvement in the production value and its running time, a more expansive 11 minutes. In 1913, the great British actor Seymour Hicks would make his first film appearance in the role that would define his career. With a 40 minute running time, it tells the story in much more detail. Hicks continued to perform as Scrooge on stage and in 1935 reprised his role in the first feature length sound version released under the title Scrooge. This one is on the dark end of the Christmas Carol spectrum. You can feel the chill of the London fog, and it's the chill of Scrooge's soul. Hicks is a little strident for my taste. You know, his Scrooge seems to be grouchy 24 seven, but this is an underappreciated version and it's definitely worth checking out. The 1938 MGM A Christmas Carol with Reginald Owen as Scrooge is considered by many to be the classic version, or at least their favorite version. Back in the olden days, when we had to look at the TV page in the newspaper to see what was on, the New York Times used to describe this one as plum pudding. It's at the bright and cheery end of the Christmas Carol spectrum. It's a good old fashioned MGM production. You just can't beat the look. The problem I have with this film is that they chose to make certain story alterations that subtly warp the narrative. In Dickens, Scrooge gets pissed off at his nephew Fred because Fred marries a girl as penniless as himself. Here, Fred is unable to marry because he's broke, creating a dramatic need. So you're engaged? Yes. May I ask why? Because I fell in love. Because you fell in love. You intend to marry as soon as I'm earning enough money. Similarly, MGM chooses to have Scrooge fire Bob Cratchit, again creating a dramatic need. Cratchit, I told you before that I could find a man more capable than yourself. I need say no more. You mean I'm sacked, sir? Exactly. Scrooge is the hub of this story, and the other stories are spokes. Contriving these dramas just so they can be happily resolved in a grand finale is kind of a cheesy Hollywood trick. And indeed, that's how this film concludes. Having already invented a relationship between Fred and the Cratchits, the stage is set for a unified ending. God bless us, everyone. Zoom out. Slow fade to black. The end. TCM has already aired this film twice this holiday season, but you'll have one last chance when it airs Christmas Eve at 10 p.m. The definitive version of A Christmas Carol was released in 1951. It was produced by George Minter Productions in London and stars Alistair Sim in a virtuoso performance as the quintessential Scrooge. Adapting a novel for the screen usually involves considerable cutting, so you get a movie, not a series. A Christmas Carol is a special case. 
The brevity of the book means that the filmmaker needs to add story material. The 1951 version is demonstrably the most faithful. There is nothing in the film that is not consistent with the original. In fact, there are several scenes that I was surprised to learn were not from Dickens. Dickens tells us merely that Scrooge took his melancholy dinner in his usual melancholy tavern. Here we see just such a scene, but there's an exchange that's extremely revealing of the winter in his soul. More bread. Take me extra, sir. No more bread. Scrooge won't even spring for a half a penny for himself on Christmas Eve. And there's a scene near the end, after his revelation, when he gives his housekeeper a gift. It's for a Christmas present. Christmas present? For me? Her amazement at getting a Christmas gift is truly touching, but rather than exploit this situation with a sentimental hug, director Desmond Hurst has her clutch her shirt closed and move away. This scene is not even hinted at in Dickens. I think more than anyone, Sim gets who Scrooge is. He's not primarily a grouch, he's a cynic, an idealist who was bruised and battered by life, and now he's getting even with the world. His primary mode of interfacing with the world is disdain rather than anger. If they would rather die, they'd better do it and decrease the surplus population. Besides, it's not my business. Find this film. Watch this film. Turn of time. You guys hear that? Anyway, Simon's here to give us his TCM holiday pick, so you know who to blame. Once upon a long time before cable and smart-ass TV, and we only had seven or so channels to choose from, and the number one movie for a family to watch together at holiday time was, no, not It's a Wonderful Life. It was and still is Babes in Toyland and it has happily returned every holiday season with a regularity that continues as a not-to-be-missed tradition. This 1934 classic shows up on some networks as The March of the Wooden Soldiers and in a colorized version, but avoid it if you can. Too costly to film in Technicolor, it was shot in sepia tone, that's brown and white, and stars the comedy immortals Stan Laurel and Oliver Hardy. They were among the few performers who navigated with ease from their days in silent films to talking features in the 1930s. Laurel and Hardy hit their peak with this film, which strays from its source material, Victor Herbert's 1903 operetta, but in many ways improves upon it. Although there are songs integrated into the action, much of Herbert's score is absent. That's too bad, but in this retelling, Stanny Dumb and Ollie D are residents of Toyland, along with a familiar assemblage of Mother Goose characters. Here they work as eager but bumbling apprentices in a toy shop. That is, until they are fired when they screw up an order of toy soldiers. We also follow their efforts to thwart that mean and vindictive miser Silas Barnaby, who holds the mortgage to the shoe house where they live and is owned by that sweet old woman who lives in it with all the children she didn't know what to do with. Unfortunately, she didn't know what to do with her pretty little daughter, little Bo Peep, who is in love with young, handsome tenor Tom Tom, the Piper's son. Miss Peep, you see, has been promised to marry Barnaby to cancel Mama's debt. But it's what happens when Toyland is invaded by the scary creatures of Bogeyland, and then saved in the spectacular March of the Wooden Soldiers. That's the most exciting and most terrifying part of the movie. Babes in Toyland can be seen this Sunday morning, December 25th at 8.30 a.m. Now don't blame Simon if you are hard pressed to find any babes in this Toyland. But for sure you won't miss the Pee Wee. What? You don't know about the Pee Wee? Shame on you. Happy Holidays. You're watching Get Real for December 23rd, 2022, only on the YouTube channel Classic Flicks Mix Picks, brought to you by... Oh, cartons of camels are sure to please, besides they look so handsome under Christmas trees, so easy to give, so good to get, give camels, the nation's favorite cigarette, oh, ho, oh, oh. ho, it's gift packed, ready to give, with a space for your greeting. Feel free to rant on Facebook, 
by email, or right on the website. We're back next Friday with a new Get Real, only on the YouTube channel Classic Flix Mix Picks.